So I think we've moved and metamorphosized from having big skyscrapers with people in there because the brand <coughs> was big physically. In the Industrial Revolution, it was your size, and your size drove your market share, drove a lot of things. And I think from that came these notions of information workers and knowledge workers, and it was still autonomy driving our competitiveness. I think we live in an age now of co-creativity, not even collaboration. I think the, the notion of opening up your business has never been more important now. So people can express themselves, literally from the instantiation of the idea all the way through to the delivery and uh, the further extension of it. And I think Facebook is a personification, probably at this side of the scale of that. That engagement doesn't mean you build things yourselves. It's when we build things with you. And you know, there's a law called Bill Joy's Law. Uh, he was the chief technology officer of some microsystems. It's called Joy's Law. He says, no matter what business set you are in, no matter what you do or what you make, there are always smarter people on the outside and more of them than on the inside of your business. And I think the message there that we should derive from that thing is sustainability moving forward is establishing co-creative. It's allowing people in to make things. And if you take a look at Facebook, everything that Aiden showed wasn't stuff that Facebook did. It was stuff that people on the outside did within a container, an identity container that, so that, that Facebook's established. And I think if you listen to Zuckerberg and you watch his interviews and how he responds, he's not building anything but an identity platform. He's building an internet operating system. He's building a place where other people can be successful. And I think if you take a look at the rules of building a sustainable ecosystem, Tim O'Reilly came up with the two rules, and I love them. He says, anything that you make as a business, no matter what business that you are in, make sure that it's hackable. And what he means by that is make sure it's third party extensible. Third party augmentation should be a base platform mantra principle, no matter what business that you are in. If you're making furniture all the way through being in tech, it's about us coming in and making things better. So you need to make everything hackable. I think the second thing is always derive less value than you create. And these two laws establish sustainable ecosystems. And if you take a look at Facebook, it's just sitting there and it's allowing, not brands per se, but it's allowing you and me, anyone, to go and create an identity and you know, give that identity attributes and then drive the engagement. So I think we're moving away from the wars per se. And I think it's not digital versus traditional. I agree with you. I think it's digital and traditional. Yes. I think if you can drive a message from the billboard through to a tweet, through to a Facebook thing, through to a that, the most successful campaigns we saw in Google weren't campaigns that were page rank heavy. Because I think page rank is anemic. And I think all the, the theories that, that, that kind of emerged from page rank are incorrect. Because page rank, when I was at Google, it's a spider that just, it's an algorithm that runs across the internet and indexes everything. But I think we're creating these islands now of, of depth versus width. And I think what Facebook has is immense depth. You know, that social graph, they still haven't figured it out yet. But the promise is that you can see they're starting to. They've got the mechanisms to allow people to come in and take these attributes and market them with great relevance. That was page rank versus one when Google did it. So it was keywords in the search linked to content. And what they're looking for is key attributes in a social graph and linking Relevance. So relevance for them is very, very important. I think the next step is, is way beyond that. And I think they've got the depth. You know, because we're doing so much inside of this container versus what we put on the internet. I mean, we're more social now than we are, uh, you know, it's, it's incredible what you see happening on the internet. You know, there's more stuff happening on the edges in real time than what's happening inside the cloud. And people don't go to pages of information anymore. They go to real time streams of stuff all the time. You know, people don't want to go to to static content. They want to go, when the plane landed in the Hudson River, where was that information first? Right? It wasn't on Google, it wasn't in Patreon. No. You know, it was in Twitter. You know, when you want to see things live all the time being updated, these live streams, you're going to Facebook. And I think that's what people yearn for. They yearn for this non-stop fire hose of information that just keeps coming at them all the time. So it's very interesting to see how they're taking that first step towards monetizing the social graph. Yes. And I think it's relevancy, is, he's absolutely right. If you can drive relevance in a social graph, it'd be incredible. But I'm still not seeing it. You know, when I go to Facebook, I'm still seeing crappy Lexus ads. So I think yeah. the big challenge will be... No comment. <laughs> I, think what you, I think the big challenge for them is, is, is education. So the ads and the platform is utilized properly. 
by agencies, by pretty much anyone, so their targeting was great relevance. I saw relevance come up in your presentation a lot. And I think relevance drives click-throughs, drives mutual monetization, drives advertising from advertising to, to advertising, you know, for, that's what Google used to say, you know, we never advertise to people, we advertise for people. Where advertising becomes content, 